What's up, board game people? The weeks just keep flying by and it's already the end of August. News is piled up and it's time for me to open the floodgates and let it pour out. We have crowdfunding updates, retail news and releases, and more. Grab something good to drink, sit back, relax, and enjoy. I don't get any money for my videos from game companies. I make these videos so we all can stay up to date on the latest happenings in our amazing hobby. If I get something wrong or you just don't agree with something I say, let's chat in the comments. Currently running on Kickstarter this week, we have Nanolith with around 15 days left in the campaign. Ivian, ha, I said it right. Sitting at around 10 days left. The Sea of Legends, Vengeance of the Empires is launched this week. And we have campaign guides for all of these games if you're interested. Dungeons of Doria closed Monday morning in spectacular fashion, unlocking its final stretch goal and getting a proper art-covered topper for the box. Doria will hopefully be available for late backers at some point. I'll be sure to let you know. Coming up this week, we have the launch of Kinfire Chronicles. We'll be posting a campaign guide for this project very soon, so keep an eye out. First up, Maladum Dungeons of Enveron put out a newsletter, an update on the launch of their upcoming Kickstarter a while ago, and for some reason it keeps slipping through the cracks when I write the news videos, so this week it won't. Sadly, the launch of Maladum will not be this summer. They're waiting for the stars to align, and hopefully they will sometime this fall and the project will get launched. During this delay, they're continuing work on the game development, making sure Maladum is polished and ready for the spotlight. This update, they're showing off the entire dungeon spread that will be on offer as the core box. This will of course be getting stretch goals to upgrade it with even more. The terrain is designed with modularity in mind to make it game agnostic, so you can use it with Maladum, and then rearrange it and use it with any other dungeon crawler or RPG that you'd like. The new clips that they've designed should be even more invisible, so you'll hardly even notice them when playing. Quests are also being made modular, so they can be played as solo, co-op, in an easy or more challenging version. Maladum is slated to have twice the amount of quests or scenarios that Core Space does, all contained in a branching campaign. Terrain is also interactive with 3D traps and hidden locations coming into play. Finally, all the fantasy terrain from Battle Systems will be on offer, and hopefully worked in to play nicely with the core game. Robomon launched this week on GameFound, and I feel I'd be remiss if I didn't mention it. I haven't had the chance to make a campaign guide for it, but it's still an interesting campaign that's massively pulling on the nostalgia strings. I feel like the core box is perhaps a tad bit expensive, but if you're looking for a Pokemon-esque board game, or perhaps you know and love the Robomon IP, then this is something you're going to want to look at. The mechanics and upgrading of Robomon and the way the story is presented are all looking fantastic. Harakiri Blades of Honor has posted another huge update this week. This time they're showing off new tiles, showing off the now double-layered character boards, which are a massive improvement over the old versions. The production dice samples are in and on display. Add-on prices are rising on October 1st. If you're planning on adding more to your pledge, do it before October 1st to take advantage of the lower prices. They end the update with a huge lore section for each of the four clans from the game. Check out all the juicy details in the update linked in the video description. A quick update on the shipping of Wave 1 for Final Girl Series 2. The US shipment is on schedule and should arrive in port at the end of September. In the UK it should hit port October 5th, and right now it will be very tight if at all possible to make the Halloween delivery happen. In the EU, the game is due on October 10th, and will not be delivered before Halloween. Better news for New Zealand and Australia, with the ship hitting port on September the 18th, you all should be seeing your games first. For Atmosphere, the gatekeeper is waiting, and waiting, and waiting, and bored. He gave us a very brief sneak peek at the lore from the other side, and we'll be speaking about delivery charges and other information next week. The pledge manager for Dice Throne, Santa vs. Krampus campaign is closing on October 31st, right on schedule. They're pressing hard to get these games out by Christmas, and everything must stay on schedule for that to happen. We're getting a little look at some of the box art this time in the festive hero trays. I feel like a bad little nerd if I didn't mention it somewhere, so here it goes. This is such a great time to be a fantasy nut. House of the Dragon has been knocking it out of the park on HBO Max. If you haven't seen it, do yourself a favor and block off a few hours and catch up. No spoilers here, just a lot of love. Not only do we have House of the Dragon, but in a few days Lord of the Rings The Rings of Power will premiere over on Amazon Prime. 
then give us a few months and we're going to get Witcher Season 3 hitting Netflix. So many fun things to watch and so little time to watch it in. So, I don't cover a lot of Magic the Gathering news, but it begs mention. Back in 2021, Wizards of the Coast announced what they call the Universes Beyond. They were hoping to bring non-Wizards IP into some of their universes. The first was a pair-up with Games Workshop to bring in some Warhammer 40k Commander decks. Next, we'll see a fully draftable, booster-based Lord of the Rings set being smashed into historic and modern formats for MTG. And then to make things really weird, the Doctor will come calling. That's right, by some spin of the cosmic prize wheel, Doctor Who will be crash landing into magic with four commander style decks, card styles, collectible boosters, and a secret layer. The collection will cover the entire 60 year history of the Doctor Who series. Yeah, magic just gets weirder and weirder. Keeping up with the weird trend of getting my board game news from video game sites, a homeworld board game, Homeworld Fleet Command, is in the works over at Modifius Entertainment. This will be hitting crowdfunding sometime late this year, and the game features a 10-part campaign with thematic battles modeled after levels from the game. The core includes 101 ship miniatures, and an expansion will double that figure, allowing for absolutely massive battles to take place. I'll be keeping an eye out for more information as it becomes available. It's so nice to have good news to report about Chronicles of Dronagor constantly. The ships have all sailed for Wave 1 content, and some, including the US ship, have hit ports. Others in other parts of the world, such as China, Hong Kong, Australia, are already being delivered. In the US, we're just a few short weeks away from getting our hands on Wave 1 content. They also left some notes on the tokens for the game, as to which are expected to fit in the tray and which ones weren't. You see, they shipped us some extra tokens, and not all of them are going to fit, but the ones necessary to play the game will fit into the insert. See the chart for details. League of Dungeoneers has released a short update this week. Work on the production sample box is ongoing. This week's big news was crossover content for Dungeons of Doria. The Witch and the Alchemist from Dungeoneers are headed to Doria with some of their own special equipment in tow. We did get a look at the wax sample picture of the open and closed doors and honestly I'm impressed. These are some fine looking doors that are just begging for a little painter's love. The Great Wall Pledge Manager has closed or will be closing momentarily. Their quick update seemed to be an attempt to wring every last penny they could by using Board Game Co.'s video to promote the excellent Black Powder expansion. In news running alongside that, though, congrats to Alex from Board Game Co., or formerly of Board Game Co., or we're still working out at the title change. Congrats to him on his new position as the new CMO for GameFound. Hopefully we'll see great things come from this transition. The news is just free-flowing from Frosthaven lately. This week we're getting a look at the amazingly well-themed inserts from Folded Space and Laser Rocks for Frosthaven. Personally, I opted for the Folded Space insert as I've been wanting to try their inserts for quite some time and I'm not disappointed at all. Both inserts look fantastic with color and graphics from the game adorning them. We also got a look at the Behemoth board game bag for Frosthaven. The best part about the inserts is they won't cause any delay with the delivery of our games, because they're already at the hubs. Now that's good planning. Construction on Skyrise is humming along on schedule. Insert design is coming along nicely. Components have been submitted for proofing. Plastics are having designs iterated on for molding requirements. And the rulebook is inching towards a final draft. This update also includes a spotlight on Lena Bobardi, another of the visionaries from the game. This week's Nova Aestus Renaissance update is focusing on that good old necromantic power. We're getting a better look at Onamore and the Boogeyman. These characters stretch from NAR all the way back to Black Rose Wars Rebirth. The real upstager here was the creepy as hell dolls they included at the bottom of the update. Excuse me while I go change myself. Etherfields barely made the cutoff for news time this week, but the news is good. English Wave 2 is continuing to circle the globe with Asia almost complete, the UE almost complete, the US 60% shipped with the last ship hitting the port on the 30th, and Canada's ship is still sitting in the queue waiting to sell the port. Hopefully, I'll finally get a look at the game very soon, meaning there are videos coming. Retail releases this week are on the spooky side and perfect for Halloween. Nemesis Lockdown is hitting retail this week. You can pick up Nemesis Lockdown, the stretch goal bonuses, the King's expansion, and the Space Cats if you're looking for something to keep you on the edge of your seat. 
Fantasy Flight has released a new FAQ and taboo list for the Arkham Horror card game. In preparation for all the repackaged campaigns and the Scarlet Keys expansion on the horizon, they published a great article diving into some of the errata and highlighting and explaining some of the changes made. If you play Arkham Horror, I highly recommend checking it out. The Embracer Group strikes again. This time, they've snapped up the rights to motion pictures, television series, video games, board games, merchandising, theme parks, and stage productions related to Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit. We're starting to see a flood of new content and merchandise come from Lord of the Rings, and it's only going to get worse. This acquisition comes on the heels of the Embracer Group snatching up Asmodee, who basically owns half the board game industry, Dark Horse Media, the comics publisher, and Thinks from Another World, a comics and pop culture retailer and web store. So basically, we should probably start preparing a throne for our new nerd overlords. All hail Embracer. Yeah, hopefully we'll see good things come from these new acquisitions, and not further corporatization of the industry. I'm not holding my breath, though. Mind MGMT is now the first game to ever be nominated for a Harvey Award. The Harvey Awards are a long-standing comic industry award, and we wish Mind MGMT the best of luck and a huge congratulations on your nomination. It's great to see board games seeking new horizons. Shipping for Mind MGMT is happening. Canada orders are loaded on a boat and already at sea, and Australia and New Zealand games are now on a ship and headed your way as well. Europe is next with their games set to be loaded on the 30th. Then comes Asia, followed by the U.S. on the 18th of September. Their new game, Haro County, made a splash at Gen Con, taking one of the Best of Gen Con awards. Solar 175 has dropped a rare update showing off manufacturing progress. The metal credit tracker tokens are looking pretty unique and quite nice. And that dice is a monster. The tokens are looking fantastic as well. We're looking forward to seeing more in future updates. Waste Nights is off vacation and back busily working to get all the details straight in the game in our hands. They are presenting pre-production final models of the minis that look fantastic. The dice are looking ready to go and the new water tokens still need a bit of love. The huge playmat is basically ready and I'm glad I opted for this one. It looks great. The pledge manager remains open for the time being and they'll be back soon with more development and testing news for the expansion. Great Scott, that's a lot of news. Let's give it a bit of a break and let the updates pile up behind the dam for a bit. Later this week, we'll be covering the Kinfire Chronicles campaign and hopefully sneaking in some new and different videos amongst our usual fare. This is going to be a busy week and September is even more a busy month. So please make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss anything. If you really want to chat, hop on over to our Discord linked below and say hi. Thanks to everyone watching and commenting. Y'all are the best. Have a great week. And play something weird tonight.